you know, we're going to have like a extended spring, nice and cool. Can you get yourself worked up before it gets too hot? Can't use the excuse that it got too hot for summer to not do something, folks. Anything. I'm just asking anything. Those of you that do, thank you. Those of you that use what I say to help yourself, thank you. And those of you that do, you start looking a little bit closer. You start seeing it really isn't that difficult. It's just a matter of not being focused on the right things that we needed to be if we wanted to keep this. If you want to talk about freedom, you had to be responsible to it. And there's people that are working stealthily to take away all of that. And so I come every week. So I think literally every week now for a decade to try and explain to you how we I mean, just pick something and we'll fo focus in on it and then you'll start to see how this starts to work. And if you want to be free, there's people that are in the world. If you haven't noticed now, if there's people in the world that want to take your freedom. You haven't noticed that? You don't really have a, you don't even really deserve to have the idea of being free. I guess I can say that. If you're not willing to stop them, those folks, you're really not worthy of being free. So I, my point is on that is let's stop talking, stop complaining, stop talking about how bad the system is. Just go back under your rock and put your feet together and make pleasant noises, not these annoying noises that uh, make it believe that you're important. You're not important if you're not going to work through the problem. They've come upon us very stealthily. It's really kind of an, silence is a really interesting uh, concept in lots of different uh, subject matter areas. And that's how they've done it. They come real quiet, they learn how to sneak up on you, and then you're, they realize you're sitting around your campfire having a good time, blazing saddles or whatever you're doing there, and then they come out and hit you in the back of the head. And so this is how this thing's been working, and there's numbers of different groups that you can point to that have done this. The most difficult one is the, the criminals in the highest offices, that caucusocracy. At some point, I don't know what really to do with that, but I'll get to something now. I didn't do it last week. I was given permission, literally, and uh, permission is uh, was important here. Uh, you you want to say that you all you can all just do what you want. Well, there's certain certain things that you you agree to, and there's certain reasons why you agree to them. But I'll, let me get to the the point here before I get too far. Uh, behind the woodshed here at BTW three one six. Now, y'all, it's not for me to put the lashings on you. It's for you to learn how to put the lashings on those that will oppress you. And so we, again, there's tools that it's a target-rich environment. You know, tell them, tell them to make the switch. You got to make the record that makes that switch against them, because they're not going to make it again. I say it. I'm trying to come up with phraseologies that try to tell you in short what matters. Bad, bad don't fix itself, folks. It just doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't make the world. And so, and there's a, apparently a reason why all that has to go that way. And we'll, I'll, again, I'll see the meme, memification of social media. They miss the point. Uh, nearly everything misses the real point. In fact, I saw some, wasn't even a memification. It was a phrase by some old dude. Uh, it, it sounds good when you read it, but when you really apply what the words say, they didn't anticipate the United States of America where people had property and property was important and that there was a system of government that protected that. Some of these memes that I won't go go on and on about them. You just, they just you just start looking at what they're being said. Yeah, I guess at some point they had there was a place for them, but this United States of America thing, however de, con, de, de, deconstructed it now has become, devolved how fallen it is. There's some inner workings, inner framework that was very powerful, and I can tell you I didn't appreciate any of that until I just maybe the last uh, well getting into the mining law. I started to put everything in the perspective of how it works. That it wasn't working caused me to go look at that. So, again, if you're not going to, you want to be a free, a free, someone who's in freedom or free mind or libertine or whatever, you, however you want to say it. If you're not working to protect it anywhere, forget it. it, it you're not. You just stop talking to yourself. Stop talking to others in that regard. Just go find some other place. Go do tiddlywinks or something. It's not helping us. And I'm perpetually looking for people that'll just step up and do their thing. And it's a hard thing to work through. I don't have a I don't have a problem working through the the overcoming some of the to deprogram grandmas is, is a difficult thing. Some people I highly, highly um, respect in what they do 
don't have the application side of this quite right. And it leads you down a, a, a incorrect path. And it, it, more importantly, I guess, is the path is the you don't even the incorrect path is just falling off that narrow path that you were supposed to keep keep in the thing that you found that needed to be maintained in your life that was being stolen from you. I just have to talk in these maybe abstractions. I mean, that's all this is. These abstractions are because we have fallen natures, and this is the best that we've come up with to to resolve these things. And then our lives were over oppressed by many different people that could care less. And so this is us, again, if you don't, if you do nothing or succumb or just complain, just use words, think about it, oh, whatever, anything you don't take action, the truth is action. The truth will will set you free. It's action. You're not going to sit there and complain and do nothing substantial against the, 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 the trespass. So one thing I want to break into here quickly before I get into uh, some other points, again, about how this thing kind of works and just kind of pointing to you the news. Uh, tell us, tells us things. Uh, those that, uh, again, would um, not regard what's the proper, uh, and I say proper because there's ways to do this and you can fall off the rail pretty quickly when you don't do it this way. And the other side gets to tell you that. This is why I get real cautious about how to proceed. When I say we do code pleadings, I tell you, you find the code that gives you the format that they are required to look at. Whether or not they'll look at it that way. But you don't have the liability of not following that objective basis, the black and white. And this becomes very important with what I'm going to talk to you about next, about what we're doing, what we've had to, what we've had to do to try and uh, work in enforcement in the law, doing the legal part of the law, what the formalities are, and so that you uh, keep your record on top and you don't give it up. You don't uh, abdicate the, the authorities that you have. But today, uh, I want to start out because it didn't fit really anywhere with all the things, other things I was going to talk, talk about on the tabs uh, as I just choose this. And again, those of you that uh, listen to me, and I'd ask you to make a comment, especially if you have a negative, if you want to do a thumbs down, uh, put your comment why. Give me some guidance if, uh, and I just kind of take this as a little bit of uh, concurrence in your vote, your silence about this, what you would like me to cover, or maybe more clearly, is my license to keep going if I license for me as a crime of what I do here, a crime, a thought crime against uh, against those that oppress us. Uh, if if I if you be quiet, then you're. I'm just having to take that you think. Well, how I go about this each week, however inferior, is acceptable, and that's a problem for me because I know we live in a time of mediocrity, and and we'll accept a lot less. Like we'll accept being able to go in and complain and moan and complain some more gnashing of teeth, I guess, if we can say, about all the woe and the fret and talk about how it's not going to approach, even talk about, oh, it's not involving me, so I don't care, or whatever, I can keep all huddled up underneath my rock and squeak squeak my feet together. That's not cutting it. And so we have to train ourselves out of that, that servient, uh, oppressed mode uh, that allows those that oppress us uh, to do so. Now, Again, it's a, it's a bad, a literal battle, but it's done, let's say, on paper. Like they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. It can be. It can also be kind of frustrating, uh, but that also shows you where your society is given you want to hold a high standard. There's a high bar. The bar association puts the lowest bar, and then they encroach upon that. So if you want to set a bar, let's not use the bar associations uh, because you'll find it's fallen. It's absolutely fallen. This is where we can get into the designation of what legal versus law is. We come in and assert the law, and they all try to try to answer you in legal. Or don't, and, well, for my experience, now they've stopped answering. And so this is a different style of problem when you when you have no one that will respond at all because they know to open their mouth at all is a problem. In other words, when they've been caught and they've agreed and they've admitted and the records perfect against that, and they weren't supposed to be doing that, they have no purpose to talk. And they're intelligent enough to know that. And that tells you, see, that's all by itself tells you, you know, they, you know they're being criminal. Because someone who didn't know would just kind of absently walk into your answer and, sit, and, and try to address, aggress you with that. Like maybe passive resistance and all. And I see this happening on a lot of the social media. But let's get away from that and get into some of these things. I get kind of excited sometimes. I see this. I see examples of what we could be doing. Uh, whether or not it would be what we want to do, that's a whole other thing. I just... This first, I have to get people to stop being crickets under rocks and and the, getting involved with stuff. And uh, you, some of you get involved, and you see it takes a little while because the system is it is it's bureaucratic goo. It may take a time, 
Uh, and well, before I go too far, far I got I think I got most of the emails answered up last week. Ran into a problem this week to answer I think a couple more. So if you're if you've had emails uh, sent in and I haven't responded, I'm they weigh on me, but I, there's not much I can do yet to get past them. This last week's problem on the on the uh, on the broadcast, I don't even know what happened with the audio levels, uh, and so I have to keep looking at that, and it may not be a, it may be a no-end problem. But anyway, getting back to this, we don't waste more time. And thank you, Jules, before I go on, for adding the few minutes on your UCY archive. I appreciate that. I didn't mean to – I try not to do that to anybody, uh, that, that you had to fill your space. I appreciate that uh, so that your, your your scheduling is right. But uh, uh, going back to this now, I, I try I, some of this stuff kind of excites me when I see these answers if we would just step up. If we would just step up, they're there. And – whether or not I agree with this is not really the point. And I kind of lean in the direction, just to let you know, of it, of it maybe it working this way. Because it, this next story, and this is going to be off the off the tabs when I move. I, I, I needed to hear this. But what states do? I can tie it in that way. Uh, st- there's a state called Wyoming. And uh, they, uh, for those of you in cryptocurrency, they, this is what they do, they've done, which kind of excited me. They take what's there and they apply it in a different way to get what they want. In other words... You can do things within the law. If you look at the objective basis, there's what you call a loophole, if you will. This is not really a loophole. It's a different jurisdiction of authority relative to cryptocurrencies and how they're dealing with them in a state. Now, I've said you need to make these things private. This kind of a thing would be able to do this thing that Wyoming may be doing, and I couldn't. I don't have the time to look deeply into it. But on the surface of the article, this would have the ability to make cryptocurrency viable but not bring it into the federal SEC problem. And I'll let's read it a little bit here. Wyoming's SF-125 legislation, which goes into effect July 1st, 2019, provides an innovative statutory regime for most commercial transactions involving digital assets. For a full explanation relating to digital assets, for the two articles with those links that I have, you can have uh, here in the article when you go to the blogcast or later, uh, can read about and build yourself up with what the Wyoming people, how they look at this, and what's going on with digital assets. So it's a little different than the SEC and securities understand. This is actually using it as a currency, but it, a digital form. Uh, this article provides a hypothetical that seeks to demonstrate the SF-125 would work in real life. So this is someone's interpretation who calls herself the uh, I don't remember now what she calls herself. Anyway, she's a very well uh, pr- um, read in this and very much on it. And uh, it's a good read as far as trying to get yourself familiar. But what she explains here is what I want to get to you. How you look at local your local state laws in a way that rig- doesn't allow for a federal imposition. And when you're in something as new as cryptocurrency, if you jump in now with these policies now, again, in policy, this is a, a hypothetical use of a code. Uh, this is how this all seems to work anyway. We have to figure out rules on, of engagement between ourselves because we don't have such a good nature ultimately. We do until there's a problem. And these things have been made uh, for resolving those problems. Uh, now, they explain this. It doesn't go through trying to make an, uh, a, a cryptocurrency some kind of an, a security. It goes through, really, private contract side. And now for those of you that get all poo-pooed and scared and, and rail about the UCC or go try to do the dumb things like you becoming some uh, some utility within that context, transmission utility, and you don't understand all that, and you haven't really done all the tests that would get you to the, the end of the road, and this happened out of the 90s, so it tells you how long bad this information has been going, and they still don't have the end of the road. And then the government figured out what was going on, and they closed off any potential of getting there, if if it was uh, viable. But this is still getting back to the basic commercial code. Remember, this is in a commercial aspect. doesn't mean that it's limited to this, but this is one state did to also avoid the federal consequence of SEC. They used, by way of the background uh, here, Article 9 of the Universal uh, Uniform Commercial Code. And that determines which creditor has priority in situations where some collateral has been pledged to and more sec- uh, or, uh, pledged to two or more secured par- creditors. Now that's a very interesting way to frame the use of, of a cryptocurrency, a digital currency, a digital measure of value tra- transferred for what contracts under commerce use. It doesn't mean you can't do private here either. This is the point of that I'm liking about this, because ultimately everything's a contract that you get down to with private for sure. 
because you get into the state side and all of a sudden there's presumptions. And then people don't have a clue about how to re how to resolve those. Uh, maybe I'll get to the article that we talk a little bit about that as well. But uh, a lender that takes a security interest in a debtor's collateral. There's just so much to talk about. As I look at this, there's so much to talk about. Remember, a debtor, uh, not a master B, you're, you're subject to your agreements and all the, you're, you're, you have to be a man of your word, a woman of your word too. Uh, this is uh, secured, these, uh, this commerce, commerce code was set up because of the failures of people to not resolve their things and to bring peace amongst people that did have problems. Uh, but you're a, you're a debtor's collateral. You've, a, you've said that you're going to give up, up something. Well, how can you, as a debtor in fiat, how do you have anything to give up? It's really a status. Anyway, let's get over to this point because this is way more important. Utilizing the universe, uniform commercial code in your state uh, through our article, article 9. Uh, they establish the priority of creditors and debtors. Uh, and I'm not going to go through some of the analysis of how this works, and she does go through some conditions, so it's very interesting to read as this goes. I don't have the time here to do it. I want to point out that someone in Wyoming, some people in Wyoming are working very hard to avoid the federal consequence where feds have not regulated, the state is free to do so. And this situates itself in something that is a federal code, which was adopted as a model code in 1963. Now this is interesting because that was done to overwhelm, to amend the, or uh, uh, amend, I guess I'll say amend uh, the the Securities Act. So this is very interesting. But inside the UCC is also the adoption of goods and services and all kinds of things. So this is an interesting way to go. The state's going to step aside from the federal oversight authority, and they're going to tell you that you have the right in this legislation to use cryptocurrency with these parameters, and they're going to use. Uh, this this condition of uh, under Article Nine, uh, when a perfection has been achieved between, but uh, in the creditors' side, uh, and those of you that have read all this, you'll you'll familiarize yourself with how you think it works. But this is how this actually works. Uh, when you can show a debt underneath an obligation, uh, when when perfection under Article Nine uh, uh, has been achieved by filing a UCC one financing statement. This the appropriate jurisdiction. The general rule for making a determination as to which secured party has priority is first in time, first in right. That is, the first party to file a UCC1 financing statement has priority over late in time, later in time filings. But for certain types of collateral, the UCC provides methods of perfection other than the fi filing of UCC1 financing statement, including perfection by control. So you have one by filing and one by control. The first in time, first in right rule does not apply where the security interest has been perfected by taking control of the collateral. In that case, perfection by control trumps, not the president, but trumps perfection by the filing of a UCC1 financial statement, financing statement, even if the filing occurred first. Now, they go on to say, so this is that you have to understand what you're actually dealing with. The point is that they have a set of rules on how all of this works. This is also working in this context of debtor-creditor. But th this can be looked at through contracts this way if it's not satisfied, uh, or until it's satisfied. In digital currency, you can take this privately, and I don't think any of this would apply uh, uh, to grants, and you could use that form. The state authorizes the use of the form, and you could use it outside of this and not be attacked, I guess is the point here, by the words of the statute and state, which is not also a security. So you don't wrap these things up in exchanges and you deal with them as asset investments. You deal with them, as I was saying, the pro a medium of exchange that you agree, that you just agree that that's going to be adequate consideration, given it's a monetary value. But the SF-125 covers a range of digital assets, virtual currencies such as Bitcoin and Ether, digital consumer assets, utility tokens, including those used to purchase goods and services, and uh, digital securities. Those are goods and services you'll find, sections that you'll find in the UCC as well, and digital securities themselves. Under SF-125, a secured party or its agents may perfect a security interest in a debtor's digital assets by taking, quote, control of the digital asset through one of several methods. Now, I'm going to get to the feeling that your, your eyes are rolling back a little bit, and it is a little bit more. You really need to slow down and read this stuff. I'm going to stop right there. You can read, though. There's three points. You can read how you can uh, block, you can uh, flowchart this out on how this works. Here's my whole point about all this. 
The state is taking this under UCC, not as a security. It's taking it under the use of the co of commerce uh, controls for, in this case, debtors. This would be where those of you that want crypto to work, you would look at this as the guiding light, if you will, at least a starting point. And you would turn to the state you're in, and you would be the one that becomes that so-called the knowledge of the of the subject matter that begins to ex find people within the state that will receive this, that the state be starts to make its own use and proper, if you will, it's a, this is an interesting legalization. It allows it, but it only allows it to go through the processes of UCC1, which is not regulation. It happens to be how you, do, how you um, mitigate or come to terms with and, and, and get, balance the rights between different, uh, different parties to an agreement. So let's get to the point of it. These digital assets now can be brought into the UCC, not as an actual security, but as a medium, acknowledged medium between parties. And I did mention the grant thing. You go out into the grant, that's private. And so they wouldn't even have anything anyway. No, I think once people understand it this way and better, and I'm not saying this is the holy, whole answer or the holy answer. Uh, I'm saying this is a start. A state is actually taking this bull by the horns, and it's going to try and make it usable for people in the state. Is what you have to how you how this game is played. If you want this to really happen in digital currencies, and you want to make it work, you're going to have to go local. Like we said make it local. This is how this will start to work. If you complain about it, or you just uh, you're in the wild west of it. I don't know what to say about y'all. Why would you even do that unless you're just an opportunist? But for those of you that look in the world and want to jump into one spot, I thought this was a very good example of how you would start where you are in your state relative to cryptocurrency. For as much as I am negative about them generally, it's because of this big old nonsense that's around it that's a promotion. If you really want it to work, and it can be used, I have no problem with that. I've told you, if I probably understood it a lot better and had more time to put into it, I probably would have a couple that I would make exchanges through. But it's such a flux right now. I don't have time to keep up with it. It's not that I'm against it. It's I'm against it the way it's working down. Why? Because it looks more like a legalization is coming on that you don't want. It's like I talk about uh, anything that's legalized. It's, they make it a crime, and then they give you a certain right to use it. This is not doing that. This is saying you can use it, and these are the guideline rules on what happens in the in the transaction. And so a different way to look at it. I'll stop here. Again, there's so much I have to uh, we could say. We could dialogue on this till we're blue in the face. What, who's going to step up and become, you know, like in Wyoming, jump in there? I, I don't know. A lot of people are running from Wyoming. I just understood a, a, a census uh, uh, said they're running from Wyoming. So there's other problems in Wyoming. But the point is, these people are trying to do uh, something that's more proper so they can actually use these cryptocurrencies. They can actually do what appears to be, at least on this article, a, a condition where this is really, it's acceptable. And there's no, no, it's, it can't be hijacked by the government, and it can't, it's not, it's actually, it's been, the state's actually sitting in the place and say, this is, a, we're going to show you how, what you're going to use so that you can work amongst yourselves. And then we're stepping back. No, they step back to the extent that you don't need to ex execute UCC to judicial, but then they, then their courts come back in. But again, um, I've been here behind the woodshed trying to show you, it, it, there's things to do. It's not about to talk about it anymore. I don't know why people continue talking. I don't, uh, why they think they're so, uh, so amazing. Like just coming through the Twitter sphere, they're just finding out the government lies to you based on uh, Pompeo's statement. I may come up with that down the road if I ever get there. Uh, you know, the, there's just liars and cheaters and stealers, folks. I mean, this is, if you didn't get that when they went to the murder memo and you didn't get that when they took away when the Smith Bunt Munt, uh, Act came in, you didn't get it. Back off. Stop having, even, stop engaging. And, and then those that you know, where have you been? And here's a little example. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool that someone figured out it's not a really a loophole. It's just another jurisdiction that you handle that's accepted by everybody that you handle things through. So you're not in reinventing the wheel here. You're just accepting that there's a certain thing called a digital asset, and you're going to run it through what they call here UCC9, and acknowledged by the state. Now, when they get into services, they're talking about some other things that are coming up as well. The point is, is that inside those jurisdictions, there's no question now. You don't have to look over your shoulder. 
then if a problem happens, you just go, in this case, you'd be going to the UCC like anybody would, like the courts would do if you had a problem in your contract or payment or debts or any of that stuff. And so why reinvent the wheel? Is it really so bad? I found great utility in reading the UCC and understanding what your signature does and how to get rid of them and how to get out of bad uh, decisions that you make and the points that you talk about because they're written down. You don't have to make it up. It's all literally copy and paste. The only thing you're adding is your actual reason. And that's all decidable by the rules themselves and what they've figured out because they've run into problems of trying to scam other people by using some of these situations. This is what happened to the Patriots back in the 90s. They could just watch it. I could just watch the perfect storm get a collapse in on them. And that's when I started backing off. I said, people, there's some people, I didn't realize that, you know, at that time maybe there's a psyop work and it'll kill us. But So I just, my sense said, back off, reanalyze this thing, and go down the narrow paths you can prove. That means that puts the responsibility on me. I'm not looking for you for an answer. I may be looking at you for what you've done. I may be looking for something I could, I wasn't sharp enough to pick up. Now I may be looking for an example that I can't, don't have an answer for. So I may be looking at what you're doing as your example, but I, I learned that I better qualify that to the highest extent. It's not limited liability in this area. It's strict liability. And so for those of you in cryptocurrencies, I'd like to see something like this work out to make it a lot easier, a lot less, a uh, lot less, what is it, uh, volatile. It, it requires no particular coin. It would just use a digital coin, that a digital medium that you that the contractees agree to, and that's good enough. And uh, this this is, I think, is very good. So I, I, I'm encouraged uh, when I see this stuff. I don't know if there's a better answer, but this seemed to be a lot better, a better direction than what I've seen going on with all these profiteers that are coming in about the cryptocurrency. And also you realize that if you pick any coin, it's nothing, there's no centralized location in this to regulate. It has nothing to do with the medium more than the medium would be going through a body of law code that's already established. Now, if you have a problem with that code, why haven't you been, been people, the people involved when you see how they modify this code to do like I talked to you on the administrative side? Where have you been to stop the problems? Where have you been to engage in these things that you thought were now so important that you found a problem in them? Where have you been? Where are you now once you see that? So the UCC has been established. If you go through the UCC and read how they adjust rules, this is good like throughout the statutes. There's a lot of thought that goes into some of this, why they make certain changes. And you start to get an appreciation for what the problems are because people are just looking for every way, seemingly every way to take a scam on somebody. And how the how the law actually works, you start to see that. You start to get a flavor for what, what's really going on inside law applying and neutrally, equally. And so the UCC is a good thing to do. I, I got a lot of value out of it years and years and years ago. On uh, it, It's not something that I refer to much. I just use the remedies within it because I know the court's going to take judicial notice of that. I don't have to discuss it anymore. And so when you get that body of knowledge in you, and this is my one of my problems, I just speak through that, and I don't explain that to a lot of people that may not know that or may be of a different mindset because they got guided into the deep, dark forest and beat up and quite, can't quite figure out what this UCC is all about. And at any rate, so that, those of you that are in UCC, readjust yourself. Look at this. If cryptocurrencies is something you want to perfect, and use in your state, and eventually it'll be interstate. Once you find the example that works, uh, then it can be promoted and otherwise. I think Wyoming may be on the front of this. I don't know of any other states. The first story I've, I've seen that came through that kind of got me intrigued about it, and it was somebody writing about it and putting it into effect so you can see how it would actually work. And so, uh, enough, enough said there. This is how you do this. This is if you want to get involved with the... Uh, cryptocurrency and get it working, get a working thing instead of a regulated thing, you're in prime time, folks. I don't even know why people have been dragging their feet. It's just amazing to me how we have the ability to make life literally easier without a lot of the encumbrances that's put on by a political party or a bar association because for the cha-ching factor that they'll get out of it and for everybody to fully understand what they're walking into and not be have it such be such a question and a, such a volatile medium at all. I certainly, I mean, there's no substance behind it, but I'm certainly okay with an agreement being made in a digital form that says these objects here will be worth the value of something you're going to do or have, and I'm going to give them to you and you accept them, and then you will apparently have the ability to trade them for some value uh, anywhere else, whether that's to trade them on or to trade them different or trade them into a service someone else will expect. 
And then if there's a contract problem, we'll go to UCC to resolve it. I don't see how that's not decentralized. I don't see how that's wrong. I don't see how that needs to be regulated any further. I don't see how that means something that you're going to get into where some federal regulation has to protect anybody. And I don't see, I was kind of happy to see someone in Wyoming actually pulling this together like this. Again, if this is not the right answer, you're going to have to work hard enough to see that and, and you be the one that actually brings the better answer. But if you sit back and complain and, and, and whatever, whatever, that it's the crickets, the noise, the sil sound of silence, I don't know what, what you think about yourself and anything around your world. I don't really have a, have a clue when the answers are right here to be done. We can take control of those things. This is a big one to my mind, actually. You get this neutral currency condition that everyone understands the failures would, any failures of which would go through the regulation of, uh, of the UCC application for finding equality in the rights, balance in the rights. I don't know why everybody's not embracing this with both hands. And and so that you don't, I wonder about y'all. And I, so making it, making, this is kind of, in a way, I got kind of excited that there was somebody actually had seen through this. And it's more of what I do. I look at the rules and I say, wait a minute, those rules over there, again, it's like, what do you call this thing? Well, if you call it a security, you make it look like a security, it's a security. If you don't, it's not. It's pretty simple. And this is where we get term, specific, term specificity and, uh, de and bright definitions. It's like I get to you, it's not much different. I tell you, we'll understand the distinction between and the difference between public land and public domain. Understand that fundamental difference and you'll start to see how everything works out. And so just on the two terms, this is how this other thing's going to work. So uh, I think at this point, until, unless I'm shown more, uh, kudos to Wyoming. And every one of you and every other, anybody in Wyoming maybe jump on to see, really analyze to make sure they're not taking this off the rail. Because it could be going off the rails as well. You need to check for that. But if not, this is a, a start of a, a state-wide thing. And all you all that are in crypto that are not looking at that really need to ask yourself why. And then why you're not actually moving to actually bring this in. The thing that you want to do, the decentralization, the privacy, all that is I. I could see whether or not it's fulfilled all, I don't know, but I could see it could happen here. And so, we're, we're to those that are, you know, I want people to stop complaining. I want them to, I want you, uh, it'll be my benefit that you do it. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to put more time into that. So, I, this is like a selfish request. Uh, I think it's a cool idea, but is it, is it really workable? Is for those that are well studied in it to be able to bring it forward and those that don't, bring it forward and aren't involved right now are going to be ruled by those that do, whatever you think on, on the matter. And so getting back into where you take control and command and you do what you can do, uh, getting over to what I mentioned earlier, I was given permission to read a document to you all because the, the assembly at my, the Jefferson Mining District believed it's important to start to let you know about how the really the immensity of some of the problem that we're, we're facing, whether or not you agree or disagree or think it goes nowhere or not, there's a, at least a group of, of uh, men who are working in their governmental authority as property owners acknowledged by Congress in order to do what they can do in order to stop this crime against everybody. Again, within all within the law, and we were... My hesitation on all this is that uh, it's easy to get people, or you hear what we're doing and then you dismiss it because everyone's looking for the final answer and they don't appreciate that you're living in a war crime country and they don't realize how hard it is to get things to move when everybody, all those that would dismiss this thing, failed themselves to stop it before it got here. And so I, I've been, I don't like to bring out, uh, I'm, I'm on record generally, to say we don't, and the district has a couple of rules that says we don't publicize anything we're doing that's in work, that's in, in going on. Anything that we've settled out, we can publish. And so this is a, a, a rare little thing. I've been given permission to read it and then explain a bit of it to show you where we're, some of what we're looking at and some of the problems that this country is facing, all relative to what seems to be a very small area, which I would tell you it's, it's global what we're dealing with. And I'll, 
get a little bit to that when I get up to the pre office of the President of the United States and the obligation this condition puts on, on that office. And it goes unre unresolved and without response at this point, which is, should uh, kind of terrify you just a little bit. If, if, if we're a people of law, and I guess that's up to us, we can throw away, we can stop looking at this objective basis, we can say it doesn't work and give up, or else we can start insisting on it, like I think Wyoming is doing under the UCC, and for whatever you think of the UCC itself. And we, those of you, those that haven't really read it, and I've read, it's like a Bible, I've read the UCC numbers of times trying to figure it out as best I could, and it's really, that's why again, another, I think that maybe that's partly where I get this idea. you got to get something to apply to the UCC. You can't just come in with your mind and not apply it. And when I started to look at what I needed to apply, it started to make sense, a little more sense. It doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean it's perfect in any means. In fact, the, no, the people who model it will tell you that they've got some problems. It's like when they tried to blend equity and admiralty back in, what, 39? It just won't. I mean, there's just certain problems. So you read the rules, you read the notes, you figure that when they blended those two things together, it causes some trouble, and you got to know how to look through that. And essentially, I guess that's what a lawyer is supposed to do. The attorneys just throw you under the bus. But a law, someone who looks at the law really appreciates how that works. Getting back to what Jefferson Mining District has allowed me to do is read a work in progress in a document that we sent, and it's the ongoing enforcement. And I want to read, uh, explain a couple things. So it sounds like uh, legal. I'll be called. I'll be told. I would be told that this would be legal gibberish. In fact, it's what you have to say, and it kind of throws people off, like it's uh, like it's not important because of the way it sounds. But these are all. I'm going to say a couple phrases, so when you hear them, you understand what they pertain to. Uh, when I say uh, the phrase, the clause phrase, others equitably bound, your mind. Now this is a this is in the matter of an enforcement of an injunction. When I say others equitably bound, uh, then what does that say to you that have been listening to me for a while? Within the context of an injunction, the authority of an injunction extends to those that aid and abet, or the officers or agents or representatives of those that you sued. And so within the equity of that case, there's people more than who you sued that are bound by what you've done, with the purpose it's supposed to be. It doesn't extend to the world. It extends to those that are aiding and abetting the subject matter enjoined. So you're going to hear right up front the term others equitably bound. There's other terms. I won't go through all of them, but these are probably the most important ones because it tells you how far the extent can happen. It also feed, it explains a bit about why... Um, when I finally figured out what an equity case could do on this principle, how we didn't have to sue everybody. We could, even though we had to sue about 10 people to give the broad spectrum a uh, uh, comprehensive attack uh, against those, a uh, response against those who were attacking us. We could have done it through one name and then hit all the others, but it wouldn't have been uh, given notice in the case. We also, I also mentioned there was a default as a matter of law. Remember, we have a problem with the judge, the so-called judge. It was a senior judge without competency. We'll, you'll hear this talked about in one paragraph, and, I'll, now, uh, and you'll hear that the, the, the official looking dismissal doesn't exist. It's void in law because there was no authority, and we have a proof of that. And we explained uh, about that in the letter, uh, that the matter of law was you follow the rules, and this injunction exists whether or not you responded and whether or not you got the court to cover you. Because this is an equity case. It doesn't have to go to a judge. It has to go with the, it's like a, an answer between the parties. And so we also have the term duly served. This is just not hyperbol, hyperbol, hyperbolistic. Is that a word? Hyperbolistic uh, verbiage. Uh, this is in the notice that this is. Because in an equity action, you have to give notice for enforcement to everyone who's going to uh, be subject to this. And so this is this is a letter of notice to those that were actually named, uh, but within the notice, within the four corners of the document, which can extend outside the first page, but in this case it is only one page, and it, that was done on purpose as well. Nothing lost. It all has to say what it has to say. It has to give certain notices. When I use, when you hear the word, term uh, du, uh, duly served, it's in. It's a notice that there is a proof that we can produce if they want to try and evade this, that we can show that they were in fact served. And they were served by, under, as a matter of the law, served for purposes of answering, and they failed. That's what you hear, the default. The word default 
is their, their failure to answer. Now, I say, though having the burden is another clause. Though having the burden, when you hear that, it meant there was a burden on somebody that they had to answer. And when they didn't, they felt victim of their own silence here. This is where you use silence against them. If they go to crickets here, and it's acknowledged in the law the remedy for their evasion before, which this is you're doing a remedy for, when they had the burden, like anybody, any plaintiff has the burden of adequately stating the claim, and the defendant that's duly served has a responsibility to respond. And if they don't, it's called default. It's a matter of law. You know, it's, there's no no intercession that can happen within the agreement of two parties to the case because everyone else is supposed to sit neutr in neutrality away from it, aren't they? So though having the burden, when you hear this, on a term quo warranto, which is the question, the writ to ask, where's your authority? Show your authority. When they had the burden and they don't answer, they show they had no authority. Uh, so um, I think that's about all that I, I, I'm looking quickly through this. Those phrases, I hope, are not too so legalistically sounding. They're required to be in the notice of what you tell them, that they were served, that they were enjoined of the subject matter within the context of this case, that they defaulted as a matter of law. And then we have to touch one paragraph notice that someone looking into the case would be misled by the record unless they understand about the quo war and tow. And I'm doing all this to anticipate these criminals that we name here. And this is, again, I say this. They, commit, they admitted to committing treason against the people, folks. And this goes on to a bigger problem, which get, reaches to the office of the president. They admitted to being uh, to committing treason and felonies and all other things. But this is not a small uh, deal here. Uh, this is an enforcement against and trying to stop them based on some legislation in this state uh, that was underneath this injunction is trying to put forward. And so the, the assembly, the, the miners, uh, the grantees in the assembly of the mining district said, this is becoming important enough that we we have really finalized the notice of enforcement. That's a, That needs to be told to people. I hope you're going to appreciate, and it's ongoing, folks, but this is a, I hope you can appreciate what it takes to be vigilant on your rights when you're up and against, when you're up and against a, a criminal, literally, they've admitted to this, a criminal that uh, doesn't want to, doesn't want to come to it to toe with the law. And that becomes a bigger, much bigger problem. And I told you before, this court case, this injunction, was using the leverage funding as the beginning of the cause, which got us back into the federal government through the EPA. The same pillar enforcing what? The environmental pillar of the UN, uh, UN Agenda 21, which the Bar Association, which was a, a party to this case, which is not named in the, in, in the letter, uh, a party member uh, to the case said that they would advance and promote. And so this is a not inconsequential condition. And let me get, get to reading it now. And it's just how the letterhead of Jefferson Mining District, and we have out here just to let you know, this is not just sp spouting and spewing stuff we make up. This is right out of the code. So everything we have and say here is in su with support of a law. And we say the letterhead has a congressionally acknowledged miners government as a matter of law. It gives the website for JeffersonMiningDistrict.com, and the date of the letter was dated April 8th. Certified mail to Speaker Tina Kotek and uh, Senate President Peter Courtney of uh, Salem, Oregon, both uh, a named party. You'll hear that in the notice. Again, the fourth, the notice has to tell them what is the case, what the point is here, and it has to be completely sufficient on its face. That's why all these little clauses are in there. They're not what a, ju a bar member judge would say gibberish so he can kind of take the side door out. These are required in a notice of enforcement. Because I say no because you are dealing with a criminal and you have to put everything within the notice that shows that they can't evade it. It is something on them. And to continue is, again, a continuing of the very reason. It actually perfects why you had to enjoin this criminal. The reason for this letter is a notice of enforcement of default judgment as a matter of law, the matter of Jefferson Mining District et al. versus Kitzhopper et al., the 2013 injunction, to House Speaker Tina Kotek, Senate President Peter Courtney, and others equity, equitably bound. You are hereby on notice that the Joint Committee on Carbon Reduction and the Legislature's Joint Committee on Carbon Reduction on proposed 
and any other similar legislation, such as HB at House Bill 2020, and your support for it is in violation of the subject matter enjoined pursuant to your default as a matter of law in the matter of Jefferson Mining District et al. versus Kitzhaber et al. 2013, of which you were a named party duly served. Do not com be confused or take reliance upon an official-looking dismissal order issuing in the matter under color of authority. That, too, we accept is felonious and trespass on the case. To subsequent to our timely filed quo warranto, no purporting to none, no one purporting to be an officer in a court of competent jurisdiction answered, though having the burden. Furthermore, any such officer was party to the matter. Moreover, you admitted to committing treason against the people, and more, through your default. Pursuant to the 2013 injunction as a matter of law, immediately take whatever measure necessary to eliminate House Bill 2020 or, proactively, any other similar legislation from consideration, and also end the misappropriation of time and public funds to consider or enact any. Executed on April 8th, 2019, signed by the Interim Chairman Ron Gibson, and on behalf and behest of the Assembly, the named, named suitors. So, the named suitors were Ron and myself on our, on the plaintiff's side. The Assembly of the Mining District was involved, and this last bit about the misappropriation of time and public funds was actually included in the lawsuit, the complaint, about what these legislators do when they uh, do something that's actually contrary to the law. Remember, we talked about the carbon uh, this is the carbon bill. We're not we're not resting on our rights here. We have to enforce a, this uh, the injunction because this is what we talked about stopping in 2013. They're attempting to do this again. Now the ramification the the, the power of this is in the in the fact of that the well, essentially the sustainable development that, and climate change that was involved in this as well because it's all part of the same thing. I said this is quite comprehensive. Uh, all that they bring forward is a is is a treason. It's a it's a war on the laws of the United States because we fund. And in my I guess this is the one of the logics that we use. The funding stream was what we sued upon to start with, along with some others, getting us back to the EPA and the state not maintaining a Republican form of government that the duty was on the Congress through the Constitution of the United States to make sure and guarantee that republic. We get back through the administrative side of the EPA and the condition where you're not only committing treason against the people, but there's a war crime going on. Remember I've talked to you about when they impose these kinds of, of punitive damages on you and they, they hit your primary economy, uh, but more to our point, the property and the production, they attack that. This is war crimes. They don't have a title or a right to do so. That's what we talked about in the letter, too, under color. They are coming under color all the time in order to violate you. People who say this, and people that are very intelligent on the Internet will tell you they're coming in under color, but they don't understand the application, actually. This is uh, an actionable thing. This now rises up to being an international crisis because... The government itself is making war on its own people in violation of its own constitution, and the people, uh, by whatever reason, have no re actual way to stop the problem. That The debt that's now incurred by the people in that harm is now rises to the office. The only one that can resolve this is the office of the President of the United States. I say office of the President of the United States particularly because I don't care. It doesn't matter to me, and this has nothing to do with anybody, any man or woman in the office. It has to do with the obligations of the office. And you start, when you start to understand, like, the subtleties I'm saying, there's these differences, distinctions between the two. It's so like when I, I'll get back to that judge, that senior judge. He, he, he retired his commission. He can't claim to be Article Three when the commission was retired. And even if he was an Article Three judge, he didn't sit in a, he didn't reside in an Article Three constitutional court. He resided in an other than Art, Article Three court, other than in a constitutional court. So he didn't even have a court to sit in to, to interfere with our Article Three matter, which is invoked by the com, by the complaint, not by the court. 
And so this was all obstructed. Remember, the judges are bar members of the state. That, in this case, we sued that state. They're, they're agents of that state. They're not. They're conflicts of interest right off the start. So we nailed all this with that quo war and tow. Getting back to the, the international problem, when you rise to the level of attacking your own people, under international provisions of law, well, first of all, that that is solely sits in the office of president to resolve. And you see, Lincoln can do it. Why can't this this president do? That there, we've sent three. We try to be nice and open, and it's not like a big old threat. We say you have a constitutional crisis that's resolvable. You need to resolve it so that you literally uh, can remove remove the reason why any other country or group of countries in the international sphere can come with justification to take it down, to fix it for the people that are now oppressed. Because they can't rise up against themselves, which is a perfection of what I keep telling you. You keep you Second Amendment people keep relying on that. This is so far beyond that it's not even funny. This notice that we sent is a follow-up enforcement on the two people that we named to stop the treason against the United States going through this carbon, uh, whatever, this carbon reduction nonsense. This is a, an attack on this nation that goes by everybody. Well, it's just Agenda 21. Well, we have a proof since 2013 and the international law to back up the fact that the President of the United States is the only office to resolve this now. And you see, we had to send an, an enforcement letter because the people that involved in the Bar Association and or as the uh, political party members and or the government itself is derelict to stop this treason. And therefore, the, the, look, the, the world looking on has the right to come and take us down, not us, the people, the United States, I'll make the distinction there, in order to fix the problem. And I have this awful biting suspicion here. This doesn't make me feel good at all. Because the United States government is so powerful globally. Look at what it's doing. And I told you that they dropped the pretense of international law because they were telling everybody. They did this after our, after our notice uh, that this was coming down. They dropped the pretense of law. They don't even care about international law. Listen, listen to Russia. Well, we we are talking to the to Korea. We have a we have to get back to international law. This whole world's kind of gotten topsy turvy because there's no order. There's no organized order amongst ourselves anymore. And I have a bad bad feeling about this whole thing. But this constitutional crisis may be understood in Washington, and is why they turned into the rogue thing that you see. I don't know that for sure, but they certainly, the office of president has not answered to this, even to tell us why this could not exist, what we're doing here. So we've had, we've proven that these people that are in your governments could care less about law, could care less about proper application of it. And the Assembly of Mining Jefferson Mine just wanted me to explain just how dire it is through this one notice that we finally read, we did. Wait Again, we're patient, we're waiting, we're watching, uh, and the rule of equity is you have to give notice uh, whenever a particular act within the subject matter is, done, is, a, is violated. We did that, and I, I want to explain to you that this was then precipitated letters to the Office of President of the United States that there's a constitutional crisis. It's international constitution. It's international obligation. That they told us in 2010, they could care. The United States government told us they could care less about. And y'all went to crickets, and I went to crickets. When I told you about it in 2012, I couldn't believe what I'm watching, looking at. I'm making sure that that it took two years to keep watching until I said, "Yeah, they're really meaning this." That there's a the only officer right now that can fix our problem that y'all want to support that's not is the guy that's not responding to this, and. Uh, this then brings on, and there's no nations right now that can do it, but I'm suggesting to you strongly, if it ever becomes that the United States isn't going to be that rogue thug that it agrees to in the 2010 murder memo, that it's not turning around and it's harming you in the United States of America, you are completely blind to the problem. You are completely supportive of the wrong agents. Remember, the office of president is one of the two political parties and that political officer also supports those parties. And those parties, they are 
named parties in the lawsuit. We just sent an enforcement action against the House the Speaker and the, the President of the Senate in a, in a state, implementing a federal policy. Now, we have things, I look at this, you know, you can quibble about stuff in the chat room. We can talk about cryptocurrency. If, if you want to live, expect that the world is going to go in a place of order and peace. And you're not looking at what I'm talking about and understanding how dire this consequence in the world is. You're really, really, really not paying attention. This is our first, one of our first open letters to, or the opportunity to tell you all whether you appreciate what I just read, whether you liked it or didn't like it, whether you understood it, whether it was wasted airtime, I, I don't know. I can just tell you if you didn't, well, if your mouth isn't sitting on the, on the, on your desk or over your keys a bit on this, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm talking really to nobody. Uh, we are in such a dire strait beyond all the things you see that I don't, I get, like, I, I'm starting to think about it. I start shutting up because I don't know what to say how bad it is. And I say bad isn't even a good, good enough word. This is really, really bad on the Constitution. All y'all that support Constitution of this and that, forget it. It's over. I keep telling you, I've been saying this for years. This is maybe my first time to be able to show you. We have an enforcement letter on a condition that we looked through uh, to who started it, and it goes to the office of the United States government, the principal officer of which is the president. In international law, the principal answerer, the principal remedy is the office's decision to stop its tyranny and oppression against you, my dear listeners in the United States of America, and they won't. And then they came out in 2010, right? They came out in 2010 to tell us that. We come out in 2013 to start, shut it, shut down one of the one of the fingers, one of the re avenues that, that they're using. It's not even it's not even the United States, folks. Remember, anything Agenda 21, climate change, carbon this, carbon that, any of this stuff is treason, and it has it's not mandatory. And they continue to push it, and you keep being tr crickets against it. You minimize it by calling it Agenda 21. You don't act against it. We have a president, an office. I don't like to, there's no man or woman I want to talk about. We have governmental institutional offices that are not, they are derelict in the most basic things that they needed to keep track of if they're going to say that there's a national security interest problem. Here's the problem. I told you when they did it in 9 11, when they didn't stop that attack, whether they, the government was involved or not to allow it, they did allow it by not stopping. Their silence allowed it, didn't it? And we got attacked. And we've seen the nonsense all come from it. That was the, I told you, they went and done it. They literally destroyed the structure of this country. And we were crickets as people. Under international law and the way they're going about the, the exploit, this country, United States of America, is subject to justified international attack to rectify the problem. Now, likelihood of that happen is no, probably the likelihood that we send a letter and they just ag agree. The, the the United States is a big bully right now. It has no matter. Don't expect any. I'm so that's why I'm surprised. I see people. Oh, the United States government can lie to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, I don't know where that question ca came from. I didn't grow up understanding that myself either, but I started to learn it back in the 90s, and I, find, I could find all the spots. How and why? What's the illusion? It's way beyond what I hear going on in the social sphere, and it's, it's made to be that way. They want to keep your, they want to keep you focused on the lesser things, and the, the more things that you focus that, that are lesser, you're not going to understand. Well, maybe you do know psychically, you know. You're gonna, you have a big responsibility to step up to if you understand what I'm telling you today. Anyway, so here's a letter where, where normally don't, don't, don't read those, these out. What we do behind the scenes to try and do what I tell you, what we all need to be doing to start focusing the problem on where the problem is. We've got a, a rogue government that's even against you and you, and you won't respond and it was your duty to keep it because under international law they can, that, someone can occupy that, that country, the government of that country and take care of you. And they are, and all I hear is complaints instead of the proper action. And if nothing else, the proper action would be rallying up around these concepts and become that din of, of response. 
acknowledging that there's a responsibility to be kept in there that failed and starting to put pressure on these people. If we, and I think not just if we, there's just no gun we can go to to stop this. I guess that's the problem. Everyone thinks there is, but we'll do it in time. Folks, we're so far past that. It's not even, I mean, I, it's a joke in my mind that people come up with this nonsense. And I think it's either they know that they have a bigger responsibility or they're completely clueless. And why would you listen to that anyway? And, and so let me just close it right there. We, we've done an enforcement notice required under the law. This is nothing else. We don't, I don't stray too far from the guidance that some people would say it's useless. It, I'm finding great effect in it. It makes things pretty uh, easy. If I have a, a guy that steps in my way that says he's a judge, I have a document that can prove it. If he can't answer, he shows that he's a felon. Uh, I, that's the simplest thing I, I know to do, folks. Why would I want to go do any more? And I'm, what am I doing? They're not following the law. They're the criminal. I'm following the law, and I'm peaceful. What I don't have is the mass of public uh, outcry about that violation. And they're everywhere is the problem. We've been overwhelmed. See, that's another type of an occupation. We've been overrun by that. And so, uh, just wanted you to hear it. I hope you appreciate the, what you heard. It was, a, it's, I think, the best I could come up with, and it was reviewed by, again, certainly the, the chairman on this letter. One page notice, nothing on and on and on, uh, but fully sufficient to explain the condition and how the people are liable to it and why and how and to be careful on a false reliance, which, if I didn't explain it, was trespass on the case is just what it sounds like. There's a case. That was the equity action. Someone trespassed it. Someone did a wrong within the case. And that was what someone who purported to be a judge in a court of competent jurisdiction. Not either was the case. They're not only were they not a judge and they uh, of competent authority, they were not residing in a court of competent jurisdiction. And I'll just say something here about that. Most people miss this detail. All the patriots out there, they miss it. There's, it's not just whether or not the officer's taken his oath. You know, I've embraced that. I want them to say they've taken their oath. Why? Because I get to attach all this stuff. They're not just a de facto rogue agent that I can't oust. I get their compliance with this. And then I attach the, attach the other. Not only do they have to be competent in their commission, but they're a commissioned officer. If you didn't think this place was set up like a military base, military prison. They're a commissioned officer, these judges. And we go through a constitutional process. This came up in Twitter as well. I think a question by um, Ranchero42. Do we have 97 Article 3 judges? Yeah, if they went through the process, but do they sit in an Article 3 court? Ah, most people don't know to ask that. Well, we did. We did back in 2013. And I knew about that long before I asked it, folks. Now, what do we use? The mechanism of quo warranto, that there's an officer sitting there that cannot, is not competent. And the remedy for that is the burden-placing writ called the quo warranto requires him to answer to show, in this case it was a guy, uh, an old fossil on the bench who says he's going to die sitting in the chair. Uh, he did not respond. How? We, I don't understand. I didn't know how. That's why it was another. It's a natural question. How does a senior judge who, re, who gives up, who retires the commission that he was bestowed under Article 3, he retires it. How is he an Article 3 judge? And then, how is the court established that he sits in by the statute, as I keep telling you to go search, and a couple of you have, understand what I'm saying and understand the truth of what I'm saying, the court that he was sitting in was not competent as an Article Three court, an Article Three or constitutional court. It's something other. So how could he answer? The failure of answer based on the statute is not my opinion. Based on the statutes, he couldn't answer and he didn't. In fact, one of the orders he does issue which and technically is not even valid, even where he admits he had no jurisdiction. He misses to say the court had ju no competency either, but that's the, the hiding factor of all this. You're dealing in a big illusion. You all know you say it, but you don't understand how it's working. So therefore, you can kind of ex absolve, possibly absolve yourself. Not morally, you can't, but you can absolve yourself uh, of having a responsibility to understand further. And this is our, going to be our downfall. And uh, so I'm enough, I guess I'm way past. We, we're still doing enforcement. The Assembly wanted you to know this. This is a big deal. This is a constitutional crisis of international proportions without any hyperbole. It's all documentable of the authorities. And that we are in so much trouble in this country beyond all the nonsense. And in fact, I just think it's put up there just so we'll feed on it. All this Q and nonsense. All this stuff, it's gender this or genderless that. 
with all this, uh, SJW, which is approximate the international imposition of, of the social justice side of the equity of Agenda 21, all this stuff in your face you address except this constitutional crisis against you and the office that was sitting there to pre required to protect you that won't, not being addressed, is how we're going to go down, folks, because we are just clueless, we're, we're, we're stupid, S-T-O-O-P-I-D people. We will not respond. We'll find every excuse. We won't take the most simplest steps. Like Again, I said, what? Past broadcast. I gave you three sentences to write. I didn't hear anybody say I wrote the sentence, sent them on, whether or not it would do any good. I don't know. You didn't even take that. My suggestion on the three sentences to write, even if you didn't know. Yes, Rumpy, I'm, I'm on you all again. Again, we write the letter, we put out the evidence, we have the foundation, we lay it out, we're hoping someday the nation starts to respond to this because it's so far beyond, it's so far into the destruction of this thing that gave a, gave you the things that you had the right to respond to in property. And that was the distinction in the world against every other place. It's the thing the UCC goes into to mitigate between two people uh, relative to considerations. Uh, the contracts between people in commerce. And they always deem with you whatever your interactions are in commerce. I don't agree with that necessarily, but it's okay. We can go there for the sake of this discussion. Again, remember, I'm pretty much looking solidly at there's a stuff that's not commerce, that's just your private actions as an authority, as your own sovereign, if you will, your own right to make your decisions without encumbrance by anyone uh, between two people. That's the only thing I'm really saying we're trying to support here. You have a bunch of people that the letter I just wrote, read, are sitting in the, they call that the marble nut house in that, in that state, uh, that they're sitting there to take you down because no one responds. We're responding, we're responding at a level that's probably beyond most everybody, and I don't put that to exalt myself. I didn't know this stuff. I didn't know anything about this until I started to have to deal with it and start to really ex look into studying the comprehensive information that was out there already, the history of us. The real history, not the one we're told, like we reduce it to his story. Wait till some w woman has a story to say in the, pro in, the, in, the, in, the, in the presidency somewhere. We'll, I guess we'll have to hear her story too, right? We can't even use the word. Is I, am I predicting the future? We can't use his story. We, we'll have to use Zit's story, I guess, because it's going to be gender neutrality. Why? Because all this nonsense you didn't respond to today, and your little ones are going to suffer this nonsense. Again, we are in a constitutional crisis that I don't think people people appreciate. You don't have a constitution. That's the crisis. Underneath that constitution, the president's obligated in a derelict until he fixes it, that if he doesn't fix this type of constitutional crisis that puts hard, that puts um, war crime on his own people or her own people if, in the future if this goes there, uh, this gives under international law the provisions of other nations to come in justifiably to correct it. And I, You need to wrap your mind around all that. That they can't isn't my point. That they can't right now. Why the United States is so powerful might be pretending that they planned it this way. And you were obligated to stop it, and you didn't. So you agree. So you're going to be a bunch, a nation of whiners, and, and the doers you're going to do are going to be doing what you're told. Oh, you'll fret, you'll, or, I'm not doing nothing. No, you're going to do it. You're going to do it, and then you'll excuse it. Like I hear everybody do it. All these things I can see answers for that are never addressed, even in the smallest matter. You end up paying. You end up subject. You end up confining your activity. You end up not talking. You're censoring yourself. And at some point, we do I mean to be cordial. You should. I mean, there, I don't see why there's a problem that we watch our words. I, I think we need to be respectful. How are we respectful when we let the offices of the president, who have the obligation under this constitutional crisis, to stop the destruction of the United States as we know it, and all the system that would be underneath the law instead of the legal that we see? You have to understand how that worked. It, how we're not stepping up in that, and we'd rather retweet memes, I don't know, folks. How, how absent are we? And I'm going to return. I'll keep talking over and over and over again about this point. I'm going to stop right there. I hope you got the, the, the answer. The, the letter has been sent off. We have not received a response. I don't know that we'll respect uh, see one. And I haven't heard about that bill yet. I haven't even researched it. I've been so busy. I haven't researched to see if it's been tabled. They can do it that quietly. See, this is all real quiet stuff behind the scenes at some level. 
elsewise except for me telling you about it today. Will it stop it? Uh, it didn't stop. We did. We had to sue them the first time. So these are criminals in the office. It's a constitutional crisis at all levels. You tell me what stops that, folks. You tell me. So I don't want to hear that the stuff don't work. I'm telling you, when you got to this level, you're not working. You're as much the problem. That's on us. You is us. You and me. Both of us. All of us. They're, they're having their way with us in ways I don't think people appreciate. And here's another way of how this all works. Let me move this along. Because it all comes and stems from the same same thing. I just have to say, whatever, however I got into this point where we started to look what we did look at through the mining district, well, after I was in before the mining district, in the mining law, uh, and then looking through how this all worked, we've been able to position ourselves in the main thrust of an attack that causes this constitutional crowd crisis at the international level, not the domestic side. Look at it as the international level. That th this kind of stuff comes up and this kind of, this, this issues of local control of local boards over land issues or, or, or how they're, they're stop, they're killing us because nobody, not none of us, not many of us know what the dynamic is. At uh, Ranchero 42 also sent me a notice of this thing that went on through readout news. Government rules against my gold mining in Confederate Gulch. And you go through and read this story. I guess uh, mining has been a large part of history in the Broadwater County, Montana. Discovery of the gold in Confederate Gulch in 1864 brought in thousands of prospectors in, t in towns like Diamond City, White City, Hassel, Hassel. Excuse me, I'll put the right, probably the right uh, uh, syllabic ex extreme. Uh, well, we're uh, built almost overnight. A sign just outside of Townsend, uh, Montana, read, Thars, Thars is gold in them, Thar Hills. Uh, the sign gave a brief history of mining in the area, but is now gone. Now, uh, let me just stop. It goes on to say that there's this local board that determined that it has, uh, through Broadwater County, has authority over a section of land that has a preference to environmental protection as the Montana Constitution was amended. 1889 was the first Constitution. These gold rights started before the mining law, which is very interesting because this is at the time of the of how the government was was determined to have give, by its forbearance to allow miners to go do seek gold that the Congress gave up the right to stop them. This was the Sparrow case in, I think, 1864 to 1865. It's the precursor case which moves the government to make the grant in 1866. Montana's not even a state yet. If, if you want to understand how the subversion works right up in your face, but they came up in, 18, in 1972, right in the time when the environmental imposition is coming, and they amended the Mo Montana Constitution. A huge focus of the amendment process was environmental protection. In 1975, a law known as law, 310 law was passed in Montana legislature as the Land and Streambed Preservation Act. The third 310 law was enacted to manage logging and other resource development projects, including cattle uh, grazing, to protect streams in Montana. Uh, later, the law provided for a clarification which that with that what is known as streamside management zone and was put into law. The new law requires an application for all projects around the around uh, or that may affect a perennial stream around 1999 a mining operation began reworking some of the upper reaches of Confederate Gulch and Broadway County Conservation District tasked with administration of the 310 law began monitoring the project through permit authority let me stop reading there they have determined that they have sole exclusive jurisdiction over the land that the environmental imposition will be in check for what I want to know, and what was said in this uh, discussion, I think Vin, Vinny uh, had actually explained this a bit to me through Twitter. It wasn't much, but enough to show me that, uh, to explain it a bit. He said BCCD made a second motion that opens the door to amend the district rule to include or exclude jurisdictional areas within the Montana Gulch area. Until the rules are amended, the entire reaches of Montana Gulch are under the jurisdiction of BCCD. It said in the story that they did a jurisdictional assessment of whether they had jurisdiction. I have to question that. And by what authority? And my response to that, when I looked into it, 
And I, this is, again, how they, take, they steal your land, because no one's there to say, no, you can't, and then they don't apply the law. It said in that story, they used a lawyer, an attorney, got together with this board to figure out how it might be they have jurisdiction. Without the right to hear and determine these things, they don't have any power, folks. And if you don't, you leave it, you can't leave it to them to challenge. See, this is a, I mean, why didn't they do a quo war and tow is my first thought. Forget this attorney. The attorney's going to sell everybody down the river and this board's going to go with that because they are protected by reliance on his, on this advice, on his or her. So my, my look into this case, my response to Vin, Vin E, Vince was, in Twitter, Jurisdiction determined lawfully, or is this multiple felony evidence? Everybody accepts this board has authority by allowing it to determine itself what jurisdiction it was instead of challenging it, actually, and then the insufficiencies of the answer, of which, like we did in 2013, would have brought this into judicial review and not leave it administrative self-determined conflict of interest under environmental provisions that cannot be overthrowing the congressional will. When? From 1865 when, by what? By the authority of their forbearance before that. The Congress is out of this one. When you start understanding how this all really works. How can a local board in a state take any authority to determine the disposition of the soil when the state itself said it could not agree to the fact in the clause uh, that they could not interfere with primary disposal of the soil in the enabling, in the enabling act of its state? I ask and further in this post, how is it not treason for state officers Barb asked members to interfere to interfere with Congress's, Congress's primary disposal of the soil of mineral estate or primary economy, which includes sabotage under federal law. I go on to ask or say potential harm to advise potential harm is no authority either or for aesthetics. In other words, it's Environmental impositions, even though they're constitutional, so-called, do not rise up enough to interfere as a, uh, with a substantial thing when they're simply for ecology, um, um, the environment essentially here, uh, and aesthetics. So where is this authority actually? It was not properly tested. So if you don't understand the remedies to properly test all this, and you take the advice of a self-advising self board with the advice of an attorney that isn't taught this stuff in law, in law school at all, period. We've got that settled. And uh, you've been listening to me at any time. You understand, like what we did in, a, in Quo War and Toe, we challenged the authority in a judicial sense. They have the burden to show. If you can show that they have no right to interfere with the congressional disposal, there was no rule to make to interfere with this. Why is Montana, the people in that county, not stepping up to say you don't have an authority, notwithstanding your declaration of it? It's like going to a, a, a bank robber and saying, you have authority to rob that bank? He says, tells you, yeah. And you say, okay. This is what the checks and balance, when I say as a matter of law, are. It's not just on looking. I say, don't look for the opinion from the criminal. Figure out your remedies in law. Start to work the rules that are there to be done. No, you know, I don't know what your answer is. See, we did the quo war and tow. The judge didn't answer. He agreed he had no jurisdiction. He said it right in the order they had no jurisdiction. And yet people believe that dismissal order is fine. It's not. It's, it's void. It's what they do to get past your, your senses. Oh, a judge said it must be so. It's not. And so we are a fallen people on our own, uh, in our own right for our you know, this country falls and fell and is a constitutional, an international constitutional crisis because we didn't ensure as a unified body of mass of people uh, that that be maintained. And so they're taking, the, the criminals are taking uh, uh, license, uh, the, the silence. So this Montana thing, I, I'm just, I, I just shake my head. I don't know, who, I can't be everywhere, folks. This is, seems to be a pretty straight up, condition that you could challenge just like we did with another injunction. How do they con how do they I read I went over to the Montana enable I want to make sure. I mean I think all the Western states have pretty much the same one. There's subtle differences. But you're not supposed to interfere with the primary disposal. So how how can non claims that that were known to be mineral in character before the mining law be controlled by this by this entity? When I've told you the road law, which is I in the same act has in statutes in different states that the state, the county has the jur exclusive jurisdiction but cannot get rid of those places. 
How would th how would that county get any more power than that? They can't. But people don't know their own law. Like they'll dis they'll they'll dismiss it. They'll they'll com condemn it, but they don't know it. And I'm not saying I do. I just know this much. I can certainly put up a formidable challenge to anybody. Anybody. I'm not at all. I want to see the outcome if it was an actual mind that could do so, an impart, literally impartial uh, mind. I'd love to be in a, in a, in a factual, uh, evidentiary law, precedentially law determining condition, because this thing is over before it gets started. And I know that because we put that up front. We put the property rights, we put the supremacy of the congressional disposal up front, and there is no answer that comes back. Why isn't that an answer for people? Why do I have to keep wondering where you all are? And I, I understand myself, whether you all understand it or not. I understand understanding this, getting it understood, be there to understand it, and, and really understand the workings of it, does relate to how you understand you and your privacy and your property. And so, if you have these, if you have a quibbling with me, I understand you, you just may not be aware yet. You can call yourself woke. You can call yourself uh, integrated. You can call yourself libertine. You can call yourself whatever. It, it ain't true. And uh, again, I don't know how many times, I, how long I've been saying it's be careful on the things you know that just ain't so. And that's why I say about going back and proving out every step of the way. Don't look for the excuses. Don't even go in there with preconceived ideas. Uh, this issue in this county where these minerals sits there having this board, this is no different than counties. When you go look at the statute, the county's code enforcement over in the statute says it's only under county uh, county possessions is the code. And that makes sense when you understand that these are private entities relative to their own code. And they can't interfere with things that are not within their, their jurisdiction. In other words, privately disposed land under patent is not within their authority. Their code cannot extend. The house rules can't extend. It's like you live in your castle. You have your rules. Your rules don't extend to the next house. Same thing here. And you read the rules and they say that. Except the criminals in the officialdom say otherwise. And nobody knows how to check that. I'm a bit disappointed on this issue in Montana, but I'm encouraged because it's easy to see. It's easy to see how we agree to this theft. This county board has no more authority to determine what their authority won't do as they don't have authority to determine the disposal before or after of the mineral estate. Period. Period. So, uh, I don't, again, without commenting, without you responding, I don't know if I've said enough. I don't know if I've explained the part. I don't know if you've got lost. I don't know what to amplify on. I don't know what to keep you encouraged about. I can only tell you that there's a absolute failure here, not responded to properly at all. I don't know about most people now. And I see tons of places to have to clean up. I just could, I'm, okay, I'm a janitor, but I can only get to so many waste baskets at a time. But see, each one of us was supposed to be, you know, being our own janitor relative to cleaning up when someone tried to make a mess tried to be a trespasser on any particular case. The trespasser on the case is your equity equity remedy. And we have proof that they'll do it. And, it. and guess what? Since we sued the Bar Association and we predicted that would happen, didn't they prove it again? And if I say that, I get a big old smile. How much harder is it is to prove these criminals out that nobody, nobody will agree to that and come in support? And if nothing else, understand the dynamic and Embrace that part, and you apply it to where you are. Where Where is everybody? Again, it's I can just re look at this and down road, down range. It's just an example. I'm like a watcher. I'm a witness. Then I'm an example, and I'm an example to a to an atrocity that's happened, I'm a disaster, a destruction, and a, and a bunch of people that tell themselves lies, a deceit over this whole thing, and almost everybody. In some part. And I'm not judging those that step forward and try and do some, because this is like a, well, what a minefield, and what a lot of stuff to t keep, up, keep up. But to talk about things and then not really do much, or talk and complain and not really focus in, and when you see an answer, not actually picking that ball up and running with it while you see it, 
uh, is a bit of fascination uh, for me to see. And then let me move on. We have more ways that we can work this out. Again, today must be just uh, how we work the remedies, that the remedies being worked on. There's examples being shown. There's how not to do it. There's quick and clear answers to all these usurpers are sitting around stealing your land away from you. Uh, and no authority whatsoever at all, nor do they uh, properly apply uh, the, the, the defenses. Like I said, I looked at the, what, the Robertson versus, uh, U.S. versus Robertson case. And it was said that they, pos- they, they proposed property. No, they didn't speak property at all. They had to give over the authority to the agency to get into their conversation. Now, there's some real problems even with that, so they were proper to bring those up, but you've, you've acceded to the authority that has no power over you. Where's their title to this land that wasn't precluded, this county? What was the title to the land that wasn't precluded by the Enabling Act and then precluded again by the Swamp Barrow case? That they get to put environmental in positions just because Montana said so. The way they're applying the Montana law, it looks like it's unconstitutional. They can only apply it where it's applicable. It can't be over the land of the mineral estate. And so, I guess that's the quickest answer I can tell you there, and then you'd have to flesh that out. It's all there to see. It's not even, to me, it's not even an opinion. I, folks, I keep telling you, I'm always marveled sometimes. I say stuff, I'm not thinking about it. I'm just telling you what you'll find. It's like I'm looking out and noticing the path, and I'm just describing the path. No different, I look out and see some trees. Oh, they're budding out, and I'm leafing. Oh, wow, there's lots of, oh, here come the flowers. It's just, I'm just looking out in my mind, looking out at the, at the path. I'm not qualifying any of it. There's just a path that you follow. This is what the interesting thing about the United States of America and property was. It's pretty cut and dried, actually. Oh, yeah, you can give the give and the take. Oh, I put my fence over here for so long and all. Yeah, you can get into all that. I'm talking about your basic property rights. What was supposed to happen? Basic authorities of government, a basic balance of powers or not, maybe where there's not, and then what happened within the context of obligations to that government that was supposed to be neutral to all the people to keep them going forward in even the preamble that has been thrown out by the government itself. You don't have to throw that out. You can hold it up. You can hold it up right in their face. And you do it in a way you don't have to go ask any permission. I don't have a note of any, and uh, here's my question. Even if I'm wrong, what's the, I talked to you about it before, what's the remedy to uh, this county, any authority, coming up to say they have, a, have jurisdiction over something? And they want to spout off that a constitutional amendment changed something. What's the answer to that? You don't need an opinion. What's your, you file the writ of quo warranto, don't you? And they come back with an answer. And then you come back with the fact that they just did a, committed a felony to try and a impose a local authority over a federally disposed land to you, the people. Now what are they going to do? I don't know. I just sit here. Does anybody even do that to see that outcome, to see what they would do? No. We were supposed to be all over that. And so, one way, that's a, now there, remember, that's administrative side. You can attack them on the administration side with the law. They can't meet. They can't meet the law. But they can get away with it. They can get away with not meeting the law if you all let them. And so what's going on, another type of thing that's going on, you, the property of you, and being you know, letting people attack you through different ways, magic, if, if, if it was a, a century back. Uh, we, another way to get at this, more information for those of you that have professed to, to be interested in this harm, and this is a harm, and the more we see there is a harm, and I'm asking someone to step up, Look inside what needs to be required uh, and, and start utilizing uh, these documents. Another document comes now. If you want to protect yourself against the government that wants to come against you and attack you, if you didn't think, again, that the government of the United States of America is a war against you all, this is the war of terror. It's a war against you. It was done and started in Lincoln's time. It ain't stopped. They come by different types of actions. Now this has now got a global bent to it. This uh, internationalized thing we'll see. Is, uh, is happening that they want to put technology on you that harms you. I'm talking about this thing called 5G, which is not 5 gigahertz. It's, it's a whole spe- frequency spectrum is now being found to be more and more harmful. Those of you that are interested in this, here's I found a document that came through a couple of places, and I'm sorry, I don't know exactly where. Uh, thank you for putting, giving me a heads up. But again, I look at these documents just a little bit differently in a way to, to try and show you how they're used. Some professor was asked 
look at the problem of the great, uh, well, he, here's a paper titled, Great Risks for EU and U.S. and International Health. Compelling Evidence for Eight Distinct Types of Great Harms Caused by Electromagnetic Field, EMF, Exposures and the Mechanisms that Causes Them. I, I looked at that title, I said, folks, <laughs> I'm thinking about for you, you all that can do this. This is a PhD that was asked to, inter in to engage this, to look at it, that had found causes, mechanisms, exposures, failures. And I started to read through this document, and I didn't read through all of it. That said, I read enough. That those of you that are interested in all this 5G stuff, and I've told you we have a little bit of a problem on the federal side, and he talks about the federal agency failure. So it's a very important document as well. That you have to also attack the two experts say that the, F, uh, the FCC relies upon. And you have to not ask questions. You have to say, this has been evidence here. What is your findings on that? And if you haven't done the findings on this, how can you purport to be giving legitimate information to the FCC? You then write a letter to the FCC. How can you accept their information as adequate where they haven't done this? This document is 90 pages of stuff, folks. That's why I couldn't go through it too much. I read through the summary. I read through the first part of it. And I'm going to give you an, a, a mode of attack, folks, through this document. You take everything he, he uses as a question or a question of whether or not the agency ought to. And you turn it not into a question. Don't make questions. You turn it into a failure that is a cause of harm that they were required to look at. In other words, he also comes up with a very interesting tact in this. He says, when there was these obligations to look and they don't, that's a failure. Like I've been saying, when he, he, they don't, they said, there's enough information that they could not have come up with an answer, and they have one. That's a failure. This man is talking to me, but in a different way. He brings them as questions. I went through, and every end of a paragraph, he has a question about what the agency would do, or why wouldn't you look at this, or why this, or how that. I, as a plan of attack, folks, this is very interesting to me how you can turn people's authoritative observations from questions to derelictions on the agency side. That if you just went through this document and bullet pointed these points with a fact and sub footnoted a reference to the harm, you would make a comment, a devastating comment on the exposing the failure of the any governmental agency that doesn't look at what he's finding has not been or been used. It even goes into how they're doing and, and cooking the books on this, folks. This was fascinating to me. I mean, fascinating from the standpoint of all you all that complain about 5G, this guy's written a very great document to expose the administrative failures and how they cannot come to a decision without showing that they had no decision, to, that they're not basing it on anything. This letter, this this finding, 90 pages of stuff, I was more fascinated by parenthetical exceptions. Take them away from being questions, convert them into a thing that was supposed to be done that either could or could not be done, could could be done but came to by cook the books, or couldn't be done because of the evidence itself, that hasn't been done, that the FCC was obligated, obligated and duty, obligation and duty to fulfill, creating any decision they make, as arbitrary and capricious, and you have got yourself a great inroad just on this one document. I would say research the research what the gentleman's saying. Understand your subject matter deeper than what I could do. I saw enough in here that I already know some of the stuff that's not there, not to a deep level, but I know that they fail. I know how they fail. It's what I tell you how they fail and how you attack them. This document is full of that stuff. Take his questions on how he would anticipate an agency should do, and say, no, they didn't. Make the fact against the action. Don't make it a question. They'll look right past that. So, again, this is a pretty cool thing. Uh, he's, he's exposing eight distinct types of great harm. Uh, he finds exposures and mechanism. He finds corruption in the system. He finds how they're cooking the books. He explains to you, if you didn't know, how agencies are accepting information from the from the industry itself that are failed tests that couldn't stand in science. It's the best science, they say. I told you, that's a fraud in lobby, that's political lobbying. He cuts into that. He doesn't explain it that way. 
you know it from me. But you can look at this document, and instead of whining about it, you can become become more formidable. I mean, I don't know what the what the FCC or anybody, even these local uh, jurisdictions, uh, coming could not answer to this. All susceptible to uh, again injunction uh, and, and at least beginning ridicule if you can get a whole bunch of people to see how this is done. It's not actually the steep the steep climb here is going through 90 pages and referencing the stuff to understand what he's saying. It's not a steep climb to understand. Take what he says as a question, accept it as the truth, and just submit it now because we don't have the time, and then over time you learn. I was astonished. I didn't have the ability to go through and point out a lot of things to reread it to you. I, I didn't have command of the of the notate, the PDF here. I didn't have command of making nota, no, notable ex, um, phrases to read to you. But, but uh, just if I can just give it this instruction. When he makes a question... Or, or makes a point about you think that an FCC should do this? No. Say they didn't. Say there's evidence that they should have. Uh, this is evidence that they didn't and they were supposed to. And until they do, they can't come up. He speaks to the European Commission as well here. This is a global problem, folks. This is a big deal. I was just great, fascinated. I mean, this guy was asked to make a comment, and he made it a 90-page document. I'm looking at it saying, you could have made this. Not, not this guy. This guy needed to make this statement to you. You can take this and make it bullet points and tell them where they failed. So what? You got a bullet point theory? You go to the courts and say these people failed in these ways to do this based on this authorities, uh, this guy, this professor's uh, findings, and my findings here, and these people over here's findings. When you do the extended read on what he's offered for his appendix, again, it's taking the bull by the horns, not making excuses for it. It's so taking this very same information and going to the experts, say the FCC or anybody else would rely on, and saying, why, have you looked at this? And if you haven't, why not? And if you haven't and why not, how, is your, how, how can you purport that your information is adequate or representational of this best science? Even? You know, I just gave you another bullet point letter. I mean, can you just type that out and lick it? press a stamp? We don't have to lick it anymore. I guess well, old school, I guess we licked it. Anyway. So, to show you how big a problem this is, and I don't know, I didn't read deep enough on this one to find out whether this little document, 90 pages, explains the problem. This is just investigatory. I'm not saying 5G is harmful. This professor says there's evidence it might be. I'm saying there's a, an administrative function in the United States of America, if they're not making war against you, that they would do this so that you're protected. If they really wanted national security, and that wasn't just lip service to the term, to do a color of law imposition and felony and treason against you, they would be doing this kind of thing. And you can put that they didn't do this, they didn't do this, they didn't do that. Not a question, you just didn't do it. Here's the evidence that you should have. That's a comment. That's an actionable comment. That's something that can shut down that system. It's not that hard, actually. But it's this letter may be getting around the world, because here it is. You don't think this is a small attack on the world? This whole thing has got a bigger, deeper evil to it. Brussels Times reported out of the Russell, Brussels Times, not the Brussels Sprouts, but radiation concerns halt Brussels 5G deployment for now. And that's right, because you now give the witness, the amoeba goes to work to figure out how to get around the pin you've thrown in its way. This is indicative of the process that we sued in 2013 to enjoin. There's a method behind how they do this. That's in the title. Brussels has to stop because somebody made a notice big enough that makes them stop for now. That's your persistence. You all over the world. There's no place that won't be affected by this. And what's this over about? But data transmission for the purposes of putting in infrastructure through various transportation plans, they have to confine you down in your travels. You don't even see this part coming. Well, they have the right to drive and the right to drive. You can't even defend that one on the use of the roads, let alone go after this one. That's now radiating you and causing all kinds of trouble within your, your, your body. But anyway, I won't go into the, the guys, the doctors. I read enough. It's pretty fascinating what's out there to be seen. It's just not being looked at, and you need to sit. You need to make a record that that's not being actually looked at by the experts or the FCC or any other group that's uh, any other so-called authorita that believes it has the ability to put this on you. Where's their title for that? Where's their moral title to, to disregard this to you privately? I don't even address that part, but it's all hiding right inside there that we just don't assert what they're not supposed to do right up front. We want to not, we'd rather complain amongst ourselves. 
or say, oh, it's, I'm far enough away that it doesn't matter. No, that's a lie. There's no, I found that out. You can't run away far enough. They're going to come and find you. If it's not into the stack them and pack them, it's going to be into their, their little community that they want to be able to keep control. And they want to keep track of you. And they want to trace you. And they do all that kind of stuff. But uh, there's certain limits. And until people step up and actually do this, I'm asking you to do it administrative side so we end it before it gets to the criminal side that you're really having a tough time. And then you're having to have opinions of the Bar Association, whether it be the prosecutor, the judge, or, or the defense attorney, made by the rules of the same group. If you don't need to think you're in a closed house prison, Reverse warrants for self-site location info results in wrong man being jailed. The story I've been telling you was going to happen. Here it is. More evidence. It goes on and on and on. They use these so-called reverse warrants. I talked to you last week or the week before. These have to be limited. You have to jump in and stop these things so that these reverse warrants can only go to the extent that the uh, that they first they can't have an objective basis on anyone in particular. You're going to find out a court case is now available that says that, that has to happen, and that it is limited to let's say an arm's length transaction. Otherwise, you're going to be sub. You can be walking around as innocent and pristine as a driven white snow, and some of you are still seeing that in this in this global warming we're seeing, that they're going to come and pick you up because of things like these reverse warrants. I talked about them last week and more another story, uh, our new regular warrants. Where this became new and regular, I don't know. Uh, but this is where you have to come against them. Otherwise, one day you're going somewhere and they target you. I guess that's all I need to say about that. This is not a joke, folks. This is a They're, they're, they're coming around with all the excuses that they get around everything because you're not bringing it into the proper proper point. I say at this point today, one of your avenues, when you locate the actual law on the ground, so to speak, your rights in substance, you find where they have no authority. You assert with a collateral attack, like I told you didn't happen on the Robertson case. doesn't happen on anything else that the attorneys pick up in land or making ponds or, or doing code enforcement. They don't do any of this. You find your substantive right, you collaterally attack it through equity action, and you attack that they didn't have the right, just like I'm telling you that board doesn't have the right to interfere with the congressional disposal that was given to all you all through the 1866 Act before Montana was even made, and they don't have authority over that, period. Where was the collateral attack? Same thing here. They're using these reverse warrants to bring you, legalize you into commerce activity, commerce identity. You don't even understand that's going on. But the, but this now is proven the, this is not a good way to go. Those of you that are interested in this, maybe not a lot. You don't want to deal with it. I wouldn't want to deal with it. These people are criminals, and you got the force of the, the, the warrior soldiers that are coming to beat you down. Yeah, this is a little bit different. Some of you out there, maybe Texas might want to take this on if you really understood what you're doing, and I'd be very, very careful when you do it. If there's a way through this one, and uh, these reverse warrants are going to pick you all up, folks. They're going to be used until they get shut down, and it's possible to shut, shut them down. Uh, but first, let me get to the point of, uh, before you get tracked down by these reverse warrants of where you are, whether you're using your phone, because, you, again, silent weapons quite worse, you, you consent to this stuff, even though you don't consent. Uh, and we're going to see a little bit of that here coming. So you got to understand how this works. Uh, a hacker says, oh, there may be public service announcements here. Hackers can say, says he can kill your car's engine while you're driving. This is not even new news, but they're doing it right through these phones. And they can locate you, no different than the cops can, and go right and get your private information and, and get access to whatever you got through these this, uh, these phones, through these programs, one, two of which are called iTrack and ProTrack, and they can shut down your car. They can uh, take command right through the apps you put on the, the side of the weapons for quiet wars. You don't think the government knows about that, folks? This reminds me of the, all the SUVs that are running into bridge abutments. Uh, oh, that guy was supposed to testify yes, uh, tom uh, tomorrow against the governmental crime. Yeah. Hastings into a tree. Uh, folks, uh, keep keep going. You see, they can track you. They get these reverse warrants to find out where you're at. Then they hack your system. So they want to talk to you. This is a hacker that's trying to be a gray hat. He partly does it. He's never, he's never actually shut that engine down because of safety concerns. Well, more power to him. I appreciate that. But this is the word and a warning to you. Continue, folks, is what they want you to do. Now that you know this, oh, yeah, 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 it'll never happen to me. The cops are looking for reverse warrants and are willing to go after the wrong guy, folks. I can't even tell you how much to talk about on all the violation it used to be, and I talked about it on the broadcast. 
how much of a trespass that was for an officer. This is very heavy liability it used to be. I don't even hear cases like it anymore where people or the cops are trespassing. You want to hear more about the qualified immunity. When they have no authority, folks, they got no immunity. And I'm trying to come forward. I'm not trying to come forward. I'm saying I've seen where doing immediate collateral attacks through equity call the problem up to the surface very quickly. It's like a a quo warranto in a way, if you if you get that part. It's like, what's your authority here? We got the authority that says you can't do it right here. What what are you what are you doing? And if it's not a question, if you don't set up as a question, you have no authority. That's what a quo warranto they can't answer is, does it? Default, you win. It's that really that fast. Whether or not the criminal action goes away is a whole other problem. I mean, you, you can tell the cop, you you walk up to a bank robber, he's got a gun, you're standing there with your mouth, but you, you know, put the butt, put the money down. Stop what you're doing. How, how much is that going to work? No, so this is the dynamic we have. Again, and this is the minor stuff because the constitutional crisis is, this government, the United States of America, is willing to do this to you. You think that the sub-government's called states? The administrative divisions that the CIA will tell you in their World Factbook, I haven't said that in a long time. CIA World Factbook will tell you these states are administrative divisions, folks. I've talked to you about this before. Do you think that they're not in tow? That if they can do a reverse warrant to find where you are, they got this hacker hacker's notice now that they can go through if they didn't know before. They shut you down, beat you up, whatever they need to do. And yet, you go to Massachusetts, and there's a limit. And these are the things I talk about. you got to research far enough, far enough to find the limit in the proper way. Like I said, it's not the right to drive. It's the right to use the, the granted use of the, of, the ro of the roadway. It's there, but not the way you say, not the way that's been promoted for you to say. It's there for those of you that take it responsibility to read what you're supposed to read, understand how you're supposed to actually understand and not how you're told to understand, and then affect the rights you were to be required to assert, otherwise you had none. Somebody tried to assert a protection. Massachusetts courts blocks warrantless access to real-time cell phone data, location data. Cell phone location data. So the hacker can get in. He can identify you. The reverse warrants are now pushing to get and have been. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a case way before you even know that they're trying to do real-time finding of you. Remember, Boston set up a plan that you could associate with a be associated gang member if you just walked by one that they were tracking. Don't forget these things. Keep what I tell you always in your mind about how you tie them together. They're here to tie together. I don't have the time to tie them all together. But there's a limit. Here's the first evidence. There's heartening news for our location of privacy, uh, our location privacy out of Massachusetts. How pathetic does that sound? Heartening news. Oh, location privacy. Why was this even a, a, aggressed against and trespassed in the first instance? with people that are supposed to be upholding an oath to a constitution. That this state first sentence is there shows you we're in so much trouble beyond uh, the memification system, or what someone said to trigger me about my opinion on anything. I'm just I'm blown away. It's like you, you, you get a property right that had no authority against it, and it's a trespass. How is that? heartening that you, they actually admit that's the, fault, the point. You were never supposed to be beat up. The guy was never supposed to be beat up being innocent either, even if they could get the reverse warrant. Did you figure that one out before I said it, folks? Did you say that to yourself? I hope so. Massachusetts court blocks warrantless access to real time. In other words, they can get real time access. Did you get that? Of course. You get a smart, you get a bunch of intelligent people here. I wish you would just get active with all your intelligence. I, I really... I get excited somehow when I know that all you intelligent people out there listening could actually get involved and do something because I think that, that this thing goes down. We don't hear these heartening news stories. Oh, what did they hand the plebes? What did they hand the slaves? The Supreme Court, ju ju Supreme Judicial Court, the state's highest court, ruled that police access to real-time cell phone data, location data, whether it comes from a phone company or from technology like a cell site simulator, intrudes on a person's reasonable expectation of privacy. Absent exigent circumstance, the court held the police must get a warrant. Won't read more. Here's a limit, folks, that you can start using. You can start interjecting. It's only in Massachusetts you can extend it out. Uh, absent, what did I say? What was the police power? Demonstrable exigence was that funky word I used, term. Demonstrable exigence. Here's your word, exigent. Absent an exigent circumstance, some real probable cause. 
And this, when you start looking at how the strict scrutiny on this and how far they've expanded, these courts have expanded it, you'll see why we have the problems that we have, why this is even a case. And all now we're so grateful, it's so heartening to hear that a court actually upheld the law. Folks, how pathetic. How pathetic. And this one kind of caught my attention just for the length of time it exists before somebody finally, one of you all finally step up. You finally had it said. And guess what? It might have actually been a real lawyer. This attorney sitting in his car in a parking lot in a town, and someone comes along, a cop, and marks his tire. How many people have ever heard about having tires marked for time? And the little meter maid goes around, marks all these tires, and another term of time around where they, they should be an excess of time, they come around and start writing tickets on that. Well, attorney sitting in his car while a cop does this, apparently, and uh, he looks at that and says, that's an intrusion. That's a violation. Court, chalking park car tires violates the Fourth Amendment. Who would have thunk it, folks? Only this last attorney ever thought about doing a, a challenge to that. That this was happening all this time is a disgrace. Sorry, folks. Marking tires to enforce parking rules is like entering property without a search warrant, a federal court said Monday, as it, as it declared the practice unconstitutional in Michigan and three other states. This blew me away. How simple an act. That we are so just absent what constitutes a violation. Simple chalking of a tire is now deemed to be a search warrant. Fascinating. And I hear people that will twist this out and not want to use it. I don't understand why. Why this took so long is a, just a fascinating to me. I would have not even thought about it. It doesn't happen around where I'm at. I forgot all about them doing this stuff. But Allison Taylor had received more than a dozen $15 tickets for exceeding a two-hour parking limit in Saginaw. The city marks tires for chalk, uh, to, with chalk to keep track of how long a vehicle is parked. Her lawyer argued that a parking uh, patrol officer violated the Fourth Amendment rule against unreasonable searches. The three three judge panel of the appeals court agreed. Listen to this, folks. This is where you start finding out the limits and extensions. The purpose of making tires was to quote raise revenue, not to protect the public against a safety risk. The Sixth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals said. The city does not demonstrate in logic, or law or logic, that the need to deter drivers from exceeding the time permitted for parking before they have even done so is sufficient to justify a warrantless search under the community care rationale, the court said. That is a monstrous statement, because I've talked about community care, and the government now uses it as a license to bust in your door to help you. And then they shoot you dead. Now, how does it... So the extension is, so if you're in your house under community care and they bust in your door, now in, in a couple of states they've agreed that this is okay, but how does your uh, a problem you may be having in your house become the demonstrable exigence that's a threat to the public that allows the police to come in and break your door down and shoot you to help you? is the next statement I would like to have someone pick up on and, and settle. But here, th this is the po all the point of it. it. There's no law or logic behind this because it doesn't actually satisfy the risk to the public. And it's only for raising revenue. Even your civil rights are limited. Do you notice? They can't come after you for the fee that they and the fine they would charge you, even though they have the right to under federal law. Think about that interesting little thing. But it's a, because it's a violation that they deem as a search underneath the Constitution. Who, how many of people over the years have allowed this to go on? The reason why this was returned is also interesting. This is actually a very interesting discussion. The decision sets out a new standard for Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. The states covered by the Sixth Circuit. The court overturned an opinion by the U.S. District Judge Thomas Ludington, who had called the legal theory unorthodox and dismissed the case in favor of Saginaw. This is not a judge. See, there's nothing unorthodox about bringing a right. 
And yet that's how they deem it. And I'm not even talking to the fact that this, this jurisdiction has no competency, that judge is likely out of competency. The U.S. District Court of Appeals in the Sixth Circuit looks like it has no competency. I'm not my opinion. The statutes tell me this. And we got the confirmation with a lack of ability of a judge to say so himself in our case. That uh, the unorthodoxy of, of assertion of a right is not supposed to be in question. It's whether or not it sits there in the law to be protected shows you the failure of the district courts, which are deemed to be the answers relative to your rights, and how failed that these things, this whole system becomes. Anyway, it's kind of interesting, a little bit exciting in a way, just a flabbergast that no one has ever challenged the chalking of a tire as being an illegal search, and then a court comes up and says, yeah, yeah, it's, well, it may be unorthodox, but he had every right to ask it, and we find that it was, in fact, a sir, illegal search under the Constitution. And that was a mind bender as well, I mean, how, how, how these things work. I have to follow up on all this. A judge uh, tells research center to give back facial docu recommendation, uh, facial recognition documents. The NYD forgot to redact. This is where you go to the other side. Once they published them, uh, every court case I understand says it's public public record. No, this judge is going to ask the people that ask for these uh, facial recognition documents to return them all to the NYPD so they can become redacted and send them back out. The problem with this is the NYPD is fighting them tooth and nail so they don't have to give up this information. That's a war against you folks. This should be an open society. It's not. And even the courts will sit inside all this information, inside of this to, to condition this. But uh, again, you you got to look very carefully. Uh, th this, I think, needs to be fought even further. But again, the, this is an agency that they asked for uh, documents and they said there is none. And they find out there's uh, lots. Uh, in my case, uh, my case for our claim uh, went against the Forest Service. They said the same thing. There was no uh, documents. I re I responded back through the FOIA. Now, this is federal, not open records. FOIA. And I said, well, you should have at least had the four letters we sent you first time in our record. And then I added a couple more fires to the pyre that I was going to burn them on if they continued. And the next thing I know, we're getting documents back. And so this is a this judge is kind of an interesting problem. Why did you allow the court? You're supposed to be sitting to review this stuff and ask. And, and if you let it out, that's an order of the court, and it's public. It's public information now. And yet that isn't the continuation. You're looking at these people that are conditioning your rights right as you watch, and no one really says anything more. And yet, as I've shown today, there's tons and tons that can be picked up to be done. There's things you have that are your right to do, that if you don't do them that way, you agree. You could agree to all the authorita that's out there. I mean, certainly. And that's what takes advantage of us. But today it was pretty astonishing to hear something as simple as chalking a tire had never been challenged. Because we are a society of crickets. So I'm not saying this in judgment to any of you all. I just hope it spurs you on to do something, because as we maintain the society of crickets, these people are hurting us. These people are stealing our property, our, our rights, our, our money, even even if it's in fiat. We're agreeing to that. We could go back to substance, but we won't. And I guess this is a little bit of a sadness to me, a bit about us. And notwithstanding that, I hope to, to, I gave you something to chew on, to actually do, to actually send out, to actually get involved with, or give you ideas to move on to other things. And uh, do what bothers you to make it right. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And uh, the whole site and all the things that we do, we can put our broadcast. I can put my broadcast or give you all the links I talked about. You can do some in-depth in -depth research and move it on further. All you folks that are uh, rebroadcasting, syndicating the broadcast, thank you very much. We could, I could use more just to pick up the broadcast. Tell people, folks, tell other people to pick it up on their broadcast. So don't get that much support. Don't get that many. Don't many get, even get comments. But the, that's what's needed for us to get out there uh, and uh, be, become some something to be reckoned with, and the knowledge you need to actually do something, not just complain about it. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 